I love kombucha. It makes me feel like I'm being healthy. It kind of tastes like cereal. That's kind of weird. Well, what's up guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is nighttime. It's like 11 o'clock. I never record at night. I have a video that I have been recording B-roll for and things, and I think that it's a really necessary video to do, and I really am excited to produce it, and I was hoping to get it out this week, and I just didn't get enough footage put together. So I have a big list of ideas for videos, one of which was bodybuilders dying young. This is a subject matter that a lot of people in the fitness space have covered, but I thought that it would be worth giving my two cents from not only a natural lifter's perspective, but a Christ follower as well. And I just want to say that I, I, I've i already talked about my desire to not create cheap content. And I think that it's every content creator's dream to just be able to sit in front of a camera and just talk about stuff that they're passionate about. There are some content creators that have made that possible for themselves, and that's awesome. But those of us that are new have to push to bring new people onto the channel. And oftentimes we're instructed to do these crazy edits and try to make things as energetic as humanly possible. And it's really Really just this balance between what's fun to look at and are you providing information that's helpful and I've been trying to do both of those and um, I'm not gonna lie it's pretty uh, pretty difficult so I hope that this is a video that is enlightening coming from my perspective because I know a lot of people have already talked about this so bodybuilders dying young Rich Piana Dallas McCarver Sean Roden John Meadows these are just a few names of people that have died in the bodybuilding industry uh, since 2017 and actually when I was prepping for this video I read an article that was called remembering 25 bodybuilders who passed in 2020 if that isn't a scary title I don't know what is and of course not all of those were due to PED abuse but most of them were and that's kind of what I want to touch on in this video, of course, is PED abuse. So a while back, I made a video called How to Put on Mass the Right Way. And it was a response to a Dylan McKnight video about dirty bulking. I will link that video up above. But, you know, bodybuilding has basically become the picture of not caring about your health in order you know to reach the end goal and in my response to dylan mcknight i was talking about how dirty bulking is really not the smart way to get huge because you are ingesting things that your body doesn't need msg and high sodium and saturated fat things that your body really should not be ingesting and so to do that in the name of getting huge is just it's not health conscious at all and so there's a smarter way to do it and i again i'll link that video and you can check that out but you know as far as the bodybuilders dying young thing i mean it's the same exact concept it's the fact that the end goal is worth destroying yourself for a lot of these people that are in this industry. Another thing I was watching in preparation for this video was a Seth Ferrosi video. I think I'm pronouncing that right, Ferrosi, where he said that prior to having his third child, his firstborn son, he had little to no issue with pushing himself until he died. He admitted to cycling high doses of test, DECA, and HGH for almost a decade before even getting his blood work done because he knew his doctor would tell him to back down off his protocol. So this is the perfect example of of what kind of insanity kind of wraps around you when you're pushing to be the best in this world, in this industry. This is the mindset that overtakes pro bodybuilders, right? The path to the top in competitive bodybuilding is really, it's just paved with PEDs and abuse in some way, shape or form. There's a few ways to look at this as far as everyone dying recently, which is that you could ask why the Olympia and why the IFBB, you know, don't get more strict with their testing and don't, discourage the use of PEDs and don't kind of push the natural leagues more. But then again, they get paid because of these freaks stepping on stage, right? We like to see the freaks. The audience likes to see the freaks. I don't think that that is even in the cards. I think the better question, and this is kind of the point of this video, is what is the motive behind becoming a pro? Or really, what is your motive behind bodybuilding at all? You know, what drives the intensity behind your approach? For men and women at the top of the league, it's to be the best bodybuilder there is, according to the current standards of competition. But we're not all doing that. We are not all competing to be the best. You know, and Seth Ferrosi, to jump back to him, is a great example of, of, of why you should not keep pushing. Because he basically said, hey, my company is at a point now that, that it needs to be. My products are selling well. I don't need to be on PEDs to be successful. I have thriving businesses. I don't have to rely on steroids to pay my bills. And it's a horrible thing to think about that that could be where somebody's mindset is. Um, that, you know, I have to cycle because I won't succeed without it. You know, you, that's a dangerous place to be in. But Seth realized, you know, that, hey, this company and, and, and all of what I've created so far with my body and with my bodybuilding is good enough now to support my children, 
that I don't need to be pushing it to this level. I want to talk about this from a Christian perspective as well, because my whole goal on this platform is to talk about how do you represent Christ while be being a bodybuilder? How does fitness fit into a Christ-like lifestyle? How does one be a good example while still pushing themselves in the gym and kind of having this near insane desire to become better. It's a hard question to answer. It comes down to what your motives are. What is the end goal? You know, for me, I just adore bodybuilding. I love everything about it. I love the grind of getting to the gym every day. I love this ability to track your progress so intensely. And you know, for me, fitness has been kind of the groundwork for building the rest of my life. In my early 20s, I was still being incredibly stupid with my choices and bodybuilding has kind of created a framework whereby I have learned how to have discipline and motivation and self-respect and courage and to lead others and to push others and to create this channel and you know I met my wife at the gym I've met some of the most amazing people I've ever been around at the gym so for me fitness and bodybuilding is really just a lifestyle that I feel that I've already been groomed by and and I've been taught things through bodybuilding that I don't know I would have learned elsewhere so you need to find out for yourself what that motivation is and you know where where your intensity is going to come from and why I think if your goal is to become the best of the best and you're considering using PEDs you know the question you need to ask yourself is can I handle the temptation of abusing this like any other vice or any other addiction it will control you if you do not control it it's obvious by looking at these guys that have all passed recently that it's really hard to not let it control you. Just just some food for thought. I appreciate you all who watch these videos and especially those of you who watch through. I post videos every Friday and I will see you guys next week.